Fight forever. That should have been New Japan. Oh, wait a second. He is the machine gunner Carl Anderson. But I'm not the machine gun Carl Anderson. I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I'd like to thank everyone first for joining me on Sunday for Stomping Grounds, which was different. I think I had such low expectations that when that show exceeded my expectations, especially for a few really good matches. I was kind of impressed. And also because I would like to thank. What the heck? Oh, I never tore that off, did I? Oh. A couple of things to announce. One, Slicks! You are a very consistent viewer. I do appreciate that. This baby got back. Goes out to you. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. Wow. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And also, because I think you got lost a little bit. Well, not so much getting lost, but I just don't check my email that much. Let's see here. Normal Manson. This video dedication goes out to you. And yes, it was wonderful when Dr. Tom came in to do his predictions video, as he so calls it. Oh, there's a, that's where the bottle cap went. Dr. Tom obviously knows something, for he was in, because he got, oh wait, I actually did get that last match too. That's right, Seth did win. 
He got eight out of nine matches right. He did correctly guess the Stone Cold Lock. He correctly guessed the match of the night. Uh, what was the snooze match? I think the snooze match was oddly enough the steel cage match. I, mean, I was like take, trying to take a nap between that and Roman Reigns. So, yeah, the steel cage match was so-so. But just for that, Dr. Tom is definitely inside the head. Of one Paul Levesque. And that's a little recap. Actually, you can watch the whole thing. Um, very quickly, I'll just recap it quickly. I don't want to spend too much time. Um, so here, uh, Drew Gulak won. He is the new Cruiserweight Champion. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn won their match. Versus a New Day. Roman Reigns defeated Drew McIntyre. It's on cold lock. Daniel Bryan and Rowan did defeat Heavy Machinery. Heavy Machinery, look at that. was a fun match. Uh, Samoa Joe versus Ricochet. Again, match of the night. Ricochet won. Um, the only match I got, got wrong was the Bailey versus Alexa Bliss match. I think maybe that was because of the math, because Bailey was kind of tallish. That's not too bad. Bailey did win and retain her belt. I've actually figured out how to put championship belts next to people, which is a good thing. Uh, more production value. Eventually, I'm going to have to get into more post production on my live streams. Eventually, one day, I'm going to figure stuff out. Uh, Kofi Kingston did defeat Dolph Ziggler. That was blah. Becky Lynch did defeat Lacey Evans. Oh, I thought it was going to be the snooze match. It was the first match. It was hard to take a nap. Mainly because I was eating eating my, my big, fat, delicious breakfast. And then Seth Rollins defeated Baron Corbin. And it was the guest referee of Lacey Evans, which set us up for Monday Night Raw. Oh, wait. What, what, what is this coming up on the screen? What the, the heck is... the heck is this? Oh, wait a second. This is my Fighter Fest ticket. I'm going to go see AEW this weekend. There are benefits to being unemployed, folks. That means you can watch more wrestling as long as you have some means of income, mainly like, again, because I am Hobo Tom. I do collect my aluminum. In fact, I've collected a pile of aluminum. About 147 pieces. I think 137 last night. And I have to figure out how much I collected today. But enough about what I do for a living. Hopefully that's going to change really soon. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And I'll get in a little bit of the schedule for the rest of the week later, too. More towards the end. Um, starts off with recaps. It was okay. I'll tell you what, it really... They really went back the old way to do Raw episodes where it was about a good 15 minutes of kind of recaps and promos. Um, Seth was out there. Becky Lynch came out there. Of course, because the two faces are out there, that means Baron Corbin's going to come out there with Lacey Evans. That's just a kind of weird combination. Oh, there we go. There's my notes. And they're going to have a match. There was a whole bunch of chants. The, the, the Washington crowd, especially, is a odd wrestling crowd. And we shall find out later why. They do like the chant, though. Although I want to say that the Sounders, which is their major league soccer team, they're known for just chanting all throughout the match. Even, like, almost... Brazilian style. Ole, 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 ole. Oh, 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 oh. 
and all the other and Brazilians just go chant crazy. And I think the South Africans introduced the Vuvuzela. The weird buzzing noise throughout the entire match. Um, so again, Seth Rollins came out, they just... I can't tell what they were chanting, but they are like... They're just like chanting for Becky. Of course, asking you shall receive. Becky Lynch shows up. We love you, Becky. Some guy was really loud. Either that or that, then Mike turned up. If they had some Mike turn up really loud, because some guy shouted, We love you, Becky! Yeah! And Renee, you have to be careful with that live mic. Maybe he was the guy behind Renee who was pretty loud. I don't know. She, she, she said something. I have no idea what it was. Um, so, was, again, that's the whole recap. And it kind of goes back to that old raw format of a promo recap. And I'm just like, well, last week was so good in comparison for a raw. This week's raw, I'll, I'll get to that later. It just builds on me. Now, the first match of the night was a elimination tag team match. Daniel Bryan and Rowan, with the Revival, take on the New Day versus the Usos. This is weird because the WWE is going to a new format where they don't want to have any wrestling in between commercials, so they kind of do, like, restarts. And this was kind of evident, and you could tell. I don't mind the wrestling during commercials but they mainly stick to like if they just swap wrestles the audience would be happy and it'd be like oh they can show recaps of them swapping wrestles like headlocks arm bars trading punches whatever that I, i'd be okay with that um we'll see how this new format's going to go so it's a new format which is they're trying i'll give them that much um, so again, it was Daniel Bryan and Rowan and the Revival versus the New Day and the Usos. Um, it was really heavy Daniel Bryan focus again. He's he's the local hero from Washington. They're cheering for him, booing just everyone else. Just like we saw from the pay-per-view stomping grounds. Like, they booed heavy machinery. Who boos Otis? This is like dirty, drunk, disgusting Philly fan throwing batteries at freaking Santa Claus. Who does that? Only dirty, drunk Philly fan does. Dirty, drunk, Philly fan makes me angry, though. And actually, Extreme Rules is going to be in Philadelphia, so that should actually be an interesting pay-per-view. So again, Philadelphia is synonymous with three letters. E. C. W. E. C. W. <laughs> Dirty, drunk, disgusting Philly fans. Uh, they used to chant things towards women that I probably shouldn't say on YouTube. Maybe for the Extreme Rules show, I might. But we'll see. And that's only in three weeks, too. That's weird. So that's a lot of wrestling. Man, a lot of wrestling. Wow. Um, let's see here. So the first kind of part of the match, I mean, was the heels. Again, you always have the heel miscommunication. Um, like Rowan hit Dash. So Wilder smacks Daniel Bryan. And then the match reset, and therefore Daniel Bryan and Rowan were eliminated. Because this was an elimination style match. So again, if one person loses, they'll both people have to take a hike. And it was just really weird. It was just a really short intro. And then we got to... And then eventually the revival takes out the New Day. Which is okay. And then the Usos... They take another commercial break. And then the Usos... Kind of jump literally right in the ring. I don't know where the... I don't know where the Usos went to. They just like were like buzzing around the outside. Eventually, it did get really exciting, and the, the top rope shatter machine 
that eliminated new that eliminated um Xavier Woods of the New Day. That was awesome. Xavier Woods goes up, goes up to the top rope. She gets caught by Scott Dawson, and then Dash Wilder finishes off the sh Shatter Machine. That was a good spot. Um, again, it just it just felt weird. And the Usos they came off to a very fast start. Um, good. Again, both these teams are tag team specialists, and you can see that with the flowing the interactions in the match. Uh, again, the blind tags are good. It was it was a superplex, but then the other Uso, Jay Uso, so Wilder for continuity superplex Jimmy Uso, but then both were laying flat. But then Jay did a frog splash off of Dash Wilder onto Scott Dawson, or those two. I might have mixed them up, but that was pretty cool though. He did it right off his back. That was a good, fun match. In fact, that is a cheeseburger match. And we have a little Roman Reigns recap. And really, that took us through the first almost hour. Uh, then, oh, I found Waldo. God, I hate that person. If you do not see that wrestling fan, you are that wrestling fan. Yes, don't be the wrestling fan. No, just, God, why do people look goofy like that? It's only Washington. Oh! Um, so then we get um, a little vignette of <laughs> Braun pulling a and Lou and in training for his tug of war match versus Bobby Lashley. I'm beginning to warm up to these. They're quick, easy. It's going to lead into a story either for SummerSlam. Well, maybe not. Least extreme rules. And then maybe to SummerSlam, which will be good. The show is I'm pulling a truck. I know that's one of the things they do for the strongman competitions. So it's not that far removed from what Braun could really do. I mean, he is Braun the Destroyer. He lifted an ambulance on its side, ripped the door off a limo, destroyed a Tulsa car. Um, he, with a grappling hook, he pulled down the stage. He threatened to tip over the production truck. Makes sense. I like things that make sense in my pro wrestling. Then we have a Miss TV moment with our truth, and he's like, "Our truth, you can relax. I have guarantees that there's going to be no wrestling match as long as you're here on Miss TV." So that's always good to see. Our truth gets a little breather. Our truth is funny as anything, <laughs> and Renee's just like shouting out random words. Renee, you have to work on your mic skills, our young lady. This isn't New Japan Pro Wrestling. I didn't say that. Um, but our <laughs> truth calls himself the 48 7 11 European TV champion. <laughs> he just begins to, to mix all these different championship belts and all these numbers together. That was fun. Uh, Drake Maverick came out, um, kind of looking like Rambo because he had his tie on his head. Um, uh, that was the best wedding, he knew exactly what he was going to get. He would say, I lost that belt at my wedding. What? Now my wife's gonna... Now my, now my in-laws hate me. What? Now the bride's party hates me. What? Now my wife hates me. What? My, my wife... What? Won't. What? My wife won't consummate my marriage with me. What? <laughs> so our truth flirts out. You need some fiber. That'll help. <laughs> and Carmel looks at him like, what? Yeah, he said his marriage is constipated. Fiber will push that right out. 
That's smarky. Washington crowd. Art of the chant. <laughs> Masturbation. Masturbation. The miss. <laughs> and this look. And it was such a natural look by the Miz. It was just like. Oh, I can't believe they said that. Uh, <laughs> and Michael Cole's so alone. There's something about being alone all the time. And uh, then also, The Miz had a, or I think it was Michael Cole or Corey Graves, but they turned Miz TV into the Jerry Springer show. That's another fun, spontaneous line. And this leads us to an R-Truth versus Drake Maverick match. And this was like a 10-second match because Drake Maverick got in some punches, a near two. R-Truth hit his finisher on him, which is like a flatliner, and won the match. Not even a roll-up victory, which is good to see. But the fact that it took 10 seconds... And really just had absolutely nothing. This was a can of soup. But fortunately, the loser locker room comes out. And I think for a while, everyone. Is it now? I actually wrote down who actually, when this happened. Oh, no, so it comes on later. Yeah, that's right. So, again, that was funny. And, of course, R-Truth just starts, starts throwing out of the arena. As is very typical R-Truth fashion because he's getting to chase, to chase all the time. This then leads us. That was a can of soup. That was okay. Uh, let's see here. Then it was a Baron and Lacey backstage, just kind of reiterating what they're saying. Yeah, whatever. Then it was Drew and Shane versus Roman Reigns in a two-on-one handicap tornado match. So they didn't have to tag. Um, Reigns starts off quickly, um, and then after a while, so the numbers game just uh, just gets involved. Um, he has some nasty stare shots, which and he he really gives when he runs into those steps he really gives those steps a shove because you can see him he's like boom and, and just pushes the steps so they go flying. Uh, Shane whips him into Drew who's holding said steps and just bonks him. Makes a great sound. That um, not diamond plate steel. It's like diamond plate aluminum, I think. So it just reverberates. It's, it's it makes a great sound though. So it's a great audio effect. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, eventually, again, uh, Shane has, has actually a decent spear. He had a good spear on Roman Reigns. Uh, got the Claymore in. Shane was teasing a coast to coast then. Gong. Gong. Lights go dark. The Undertaker shows up, which was a nice little tweak there. That was pretty good. Um, he saves the match. I guess the match gets tossed out. Wait a second. This was a match. Because this match gets tossed. This match piece of toast and sear something in the crowd oh yeah what was it um Corey Graves called 
I think because the crowd was like just chanting for our truth. They just called them heartless heathens. Whoa, where did that come from? Then we got our tug of war between Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. And I, I'm beginning to warm up to these tests of strength because this is at least entertaining. It, it's, it keeps it confined in the wrestling ring, although that rope was a little too long for that wrestling ring. So I'm like, how are they going to do this? I guess they just had to pull the other guy instead of pulling the little red tag past the mark. Okay, I can see that. Um, again, it's a test of strength. Braun gets right to the edge. Looks up. Smiles. Starts pulling Bobby Lashley towards him. Eventually, as soon as Bobby Lashley steps over the red line, uh, he starts to beat on Braun. Those, I, I do like the fact, though, they're giving the, they're I think they're testing things out for Fox, and the fact that they had the tail of the tape, which is pretty cool. Uh, it makes it seem actually pretty professional. Again, he just attacked him. Again, this is a really good niche between for the, for these two individuals. Again, both powerhouses. Um, eventually, Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley tries to mock. Braun Strowman, he eats a shoulder tackle. Lashley eventually gets the better of it. It was good. Then AJ Styles is backstage. He's trying to do an interview with Charlie. First of all, Charlie, shut your mouth and know your role. When AJ Styles speaks, you listen. You don't ask questions. AJ Styles, he, he doesn't need scripted promos. Then all of a sudden... We have Noe Jose's music, and the Good Brothers are in the Congo line. AJ Styles says, what's up with you two dingbats? Well, it doesn't use dingbats. He chides the club. Bullet club tension? That'd be pretty good. Um, then, of course, because the club's going to be facing the Viking Raiders next. This in New Japan could have been really good. Here it was so so. Um, again, in New Japan, it could have been really good. However, in WWE, it turned out to be gar garbage because the club's just out in the ring. They're waiting for the Viking Raiders music, and the whole crowd's still chanting "War, War, 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 War." Just still a really easy chant. You can't fault them for what the crowd wants to do. Anderson is still so good. He is one of the best. Um, the double teams they do, the uh, Boot of Doom's fun. Again, even Corey Graves references New Japan. Those machine gun-like fists. Again, machine gunner. Carl Anderson. I, I did get a compliment on the shirt once, though. So. Every so often, I do like a oh, bust out machine gun shirt. And one day, I do need a new lapel mic. This is just getting beat to all everything. Unfortunately, though, the the Viking Raiders shot their agility. Um, Ivar, I guess, is his new name. He does start. He does cartwheels, does flippy stuff. That's cool. I like that. Uh, eventually, Anderson eats the pin again. Club loss and AJ is just like losers. Um, we go backstage to Alexa and Nikki Cross. I didn't realize how utterly tiny Alexa Bliss is until I saw her next to Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross, if she's four foot nine, she's two inches too tall. But the thing is, Nikki Cross at least has some width to her. Alexa's skinny. I mean, yeah, like, so So here's Nikki Cross. Here, here's Alexa. But then, here's Nikki Cross. And here's Alexa. I guess they balance each other out. Um, so again, uh, Nikki Cross is there. Again, she gets involved with... Natalia and Naomi. Again, all about Bailey. And yeah, Bailey's right. 
So, eh, whatever. Then we have Heath Slater versus Mojo Rally. <laughs> and this match actually officially never got started, but a whole bunch of series of matches. Oh, wait a second. I forgot something. The Club versus Viking Raiders. That was a ham sandwich. I'll try and put that up where I should. So I forgot that. I f actually forgot to write that down. It was a ham sandwich because the club lost and did so quickly. So again, that's uh, just a ham sandwich. So we have Heath Slater taking on Mojo Rally. You're like, eh, well, they have to fill something. Might as well give these two some time. Our truth comes running onto the room right before the bell rings. Of course, he's being chased by the entire loser all at locker room. Heath Slater hits that um, Rick Rude esque Rude Awakening neck breaker on Our Truth. Pins him. Heath Slater, with a legitimate wrestling move, becomes the new 24 7 champion. That was fun. That was creative. You didn't see that happening. That's a ham sandwich. And then our truth is kind of outed for a while. And and kind of wins back because Heath gets distracted by everyone. Our truth is very quickly becoming the master of the roll-up, although I think he won again by a flatliner. Onto the belt, by the way. That was pretty cool. He pins Heath Slater. Again, a wrestling match with a wrestling move for the 24-7 champion. Another ham sandwich. Cedric Alexander bursts in the ring. Hits the lung... The, um, oh, I forget his name. The, the lung blower. Yeah. It's called something else, but it's a lung blower. Lung buster, whatever it is. A wrestling move for a wrestling match. We have a new 24-7 champion, and we have another AM sandwich. And then Cedric goes running outside the ring, met by Ethan Carter III. E C three. And he for a short time, E C three becomes the 24-7 champion. And I'm like, wait a second. Although he did win by a wrestling move. This is getting a little bit predictable. This is a can of soup. And then, of course, because he is the master of the roll-up, R-Truth gets the belt back. I think via roll-up on Ethan Carter the third. Eh, that's okay. That's another can of soup wrestling match, though. And R-Truth gets the title and runs away. Like he should. So that was really good, though. And it was a good time filler to showcase some athletes. Everyone's getting a chance to 24 7 title. I, I, I can live with it. Uh, let's see here. LHP. Oh, Lucia House Party, though, never got a shot at it, though. They're just, they're just there to get, get tossed, and they're just there to be tossed onto others. That was pretty cool. Let's see here. Then we had Kofi Kingston. So we have Ricochet. Giving a good promo. And we have a Kevin and Owen show. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is funny. Cause cause poor Charlie was in the ring and it's like it's like, hey, not Renee, shut up. I'm I have the proper questions. We don't need this this softball questions. We don't need this fluff reporting. Get out of the ring, not Renee. That was funny. Kevin Owens is the best heel. Uh, so it starts off Kofi Kingston versus Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn runs him down a little bit. Uh, Sami stomps a muddle on him, which is nice to see. Sami Zayn actually looks fairly strong in the loss. Uh, <laughs> I like this, though. Kevin Owens must have seen what happened to Scarlett Bordeaux. 
and I'll give my opinion on it while I have plenty of time to do that. Um, Kevin Owens very simply says, you'll never touch me. To some fan, I guess, who's going to try to hide five of them. Or a really innocent, like, like high five. I'm kind of a mixed opinion. I saw what happened. Being a wrestling fan who's been in the front row, I think... Well, well, my experience when I was in the front row, I know Heavy Machinery, Otis in particular, came crashing into where I was sitting. And I, I was there trying to be the cool wrestler. I'm like, oh, come on, Otis, get up. Come on, Otis, Tucker needs you. I'm like, yeah. And my nephews are next to me, so I'm trying to encourage him. He's like, yeah, yeah, encourage him, encourage him. And I'm, like, I'm like, hey, hey, Otis, do you need a hand up? So I'm like, cool. I, I can see that. Um, yeah, you stick your hand out. Again, very someone innocently, the, the face would come around, can give you a high five. You're like, yes! Um, what was it? It was Heavy Machinery picked up my sister. Uh, my sister got all up for Drew McIntyre. Drew kind of put his arm around her. I guess that's a wrestler touching a fan, though. But then my sister was also touching him because she had her arm around his waist. So, I don't know. That was, that was something. So I can't. So as far as touching wrestlers, if it's within the confines of just like literally sticking your hand out for a high five, you at least give the wrestler the option of, of slapping you five, or like high five or whatever. Like hey, yeah, like, yeah, awesome. Or if um, I'm trying to think, or if they stand right next to you, and and they like put their arm around you first. Like, I know that happened with myself. I don't think Ruby Ryan. But it happened between myself and Kairi Sane, where I got a picture of Kairi Sane, and I was right next to her, and she kind of put her arm, like, barely, like, you know, I put my arm, like, barely touching her shoulder, and I got a picture taken. <sighs> So, there is a time and place for touching wrestlers. I know in the indies, sometimes the wrestler will ask you to hold them. Like, like they'll be like here against the barricade, and the guy will be like, hold them. And you're like, okay. And you hold his arms. Woo! Just for a chop, and then you kind of let go, and you're like, yes, 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 yes. So, there, there are some spontaneous ways. That the fans, especially in the front row, can touch and somewhat physically interact with wrestlers. Again, you stick your hand out. That wrestler makes a certain choice. Yeah, I'm going to slap hands or I'm going to be the heel and be like, no, whatever. Or I'm just going to go walk around and say yes. E either way is kind of fine with me. I think where it gets semi uncomfortable is the fact that the that the fan kind of wrapped his arms around her when she was kind of out of it and just figuring out where she was so and it's one thing to, to give a guy a pat on the back it's like it's like yeah man you okay or or I think in rare occasions, sometimes the wrestler will ask, if, if yes, the wrestler's like, dude, you need a hand up? Like, okay. And, and you like, you literally help him up, and, and you're like, thanks. And the wrestler's like, cool. That's okay. I think when it a little more hemi, semi, demi sexualized, and not just putting your arm around someone's shoulder for, for a photo op. Because, like, she had her arm here, and, and my arm was higher, but still, like, on shoulder. So, kind of have to use a measure of good taste. Like, it would be my absolute Princess Kimberly. I think she's single. 
if she flopped before me and I was in the front front row, I said, Princess Kimberly, are you okay? And she's like, yeah. It's like, and I extend my hand and say, do you need a hand up? And she looked up to me and said, yes. I would just honestly help her up. And I would probably be the happiest man in the entire ring. Or if, who else? Who was a really cute? Or if Karen Q did that, or Zia Lee, or Chelsea Green for that matter. Who else? No, I'm um, Jenkins is cute enough. Who else? I don't know. But you know what I'm talking about. Just help them out. Be almost a human being. I mean, as long as you don't... I don't think I would ever wrap my arms around a female wrestler's midsection. Because that's just a little on the creepy side. My whole thing, folks, don't be creepy. So, that's my little rant and rave about that. I understand some wrestlers don't mind the contact. Some wrestlers welcome the contact. They go back there, and everyone's there, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they relish that. Some wrestlers don't. If you're going to be one of those wrestlers, I mean, just realize if you don't like being touched, just don't go near the front row. And if you're a heel wrestler, just say, oh, yeah. And that's still kind of cool, though. I guess what I'll say is just have limits. Don't be stupid. If you are going to drink, don't go to wrestling matches. Just, just stay at home. Watch it on YouTube or somewhere else. So there's my little rant and rave about that. So I'm going to have to make a pretty long title. And that's all I really have to say about that. I mean, just don't be creepy. Don't tear at another wrestler's mask, because that's a very rude thing to do, and that will get you punched in the face. Um, don't... How do I want to say it? It's not really a grope. Don't... Boon embrace any female wrestlers if you're a guy, or a girl, probably. Yeah, the same as, I'm not going to spoon and embrace Otis. That's, no. No. No! No. No. Um, so again, he was really funny about that. Um, Sami Zayn actually looked fairly strong. Um, he hit that buckle bomb. That, that looked great. Uh, uh, just kind of... Quick thing, um, it was a roll up. Mm, I'm getting kind of sick of these roll ups. Then this match, this was fun though. It was a good quality cheeseburger match. And then now uh, Kevin Owens starts to run his mouth. And as soon as Kevin Owens starts to run his mouth, I thought I did that. Well, we'll see. So as soon as Kevin Owens starts to run his mouth, he challenges Kofi Kingston to a match. Yeah, I could have sworn I saw that. Uh, so Kevin Owens versus Kofi Kingston. Kofi's getting back a little bit again. Kevin Owens was fairly strong, but takes it to the outside of the ring. You versus Kevin Owens, because there is such a thing as a count out. So Kofi Kingston hit the SOS onto the steel part of the ramp. Bonk. And Kevin Owens gets counted out. Eh, in a ham sandwich match. Oh, that's right, this is number two. I started off at 10. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I did do something right for a change. And then Samoa Joe. Comes out, starts to beat up Kofi Kingston. So I guess this makes sense if they keep the two champions 
between both shows, that's pretty good. Yeah, the U.S. belt on Raw, the IC belt on SmackDown. That balances things out, so that's not too bad. Then you have the two women's belts and the the women's tag belt and the cruiserweight belt. So, that, so yeah, that's okay. I'm okay with that. Samoa so Joe just 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 tries to murder Kofi Kingston. That's all that has to be said about that. Uh, then we have Naomi versus Alexa Bliss. <laughs> Naomi looked like a glowing bumblebee. Naomi's hot though. She was a hot glowing bumblebee. Um, it was a kind of a basic match. Uh, Naomi nailed Nikki Cross because Nikki Cross was trying to help Alexa Bliss. Um, Alexa Bliss got sent to the outside. You know, I don't know what it. I don't know what's called. But there's the one move that Naomi did that it has to hurt her more. It's when she does a split on top of someone. Just knowing the female anatomy, that, that can't be that comfortable. I don't know, though. It's been a long time since I've done a split myself. Back in my college days, when I had looser ligaments. Then, of course, father time caught up with me. Those ligaments are not so loose anymore. And those muscles aren't loose anymore. And in fact, I'm feeling sometimes where I forgot I had muscle. I'm like, why does this hurt? There's muscle there? Cool. Um, so, Alexa Bliss is on the outside. <laughs> to get back to wrestling. Alexa Bliss is on the outside. Uh, Nikki Cross tries to help her. Naomi does a dive. Again, Alexa Bliss is kind of wandered away and poor Nikki Cross ate the dive. And Nikki starts to beat up Naomi. And then once that on the outside of the ring. So what we got here, baby, is a dusty old World War II can of soup. That did lead to a better match and a tag team match of uh, Natalia, Nightheart, and Naomi takes on Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. I saw the full Nelson. I haven't seen anyone been ragdolled by a full Nelson in, in so long. Um, again, Naomi had the full Nelson applied to Alexa Bliss because I could tell because the hair was still getting in the way. And then there was that, that like um, butt bomb. I don't know, she just like picked uh, by Natalia, like literally picked her up and dropped her on her butt. I don't know. Some wrestling moves just make no sense to me. At least the atomic drop, I. And the inverted atomic drop, I understand. So now you're driving the knee in. The atomic bomb, you're driving a knee into someone's tailbone. Not fun. The atomic drop, of course, you drive the knee in, 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 into the groin area. I've always wondered how that's still not a DQ, but whatever. Uh, so again, there was a snap suplex two times by Natalia. Natalia's still pretty strong. Um, <laughs> Nikki used Natalia as a weapon, though. That was awesome. That made me excited for wrestling again. Uh, she literally threw Natty into Naomi. Naomi goes. Bounces off, jumps off the, the ring, bounces off the barricade, and she's done with. Uh, Nikki Cross hits her spinning neck breaker after a blind tag. And Alexa Bliss gets the win, and then for some reason, Renee was really poo pooing it. Say, like, oh, Nikki did all the work in that match. No, because Nikki Cross, after she hit that, she rolled right out of the ring. She knew what happened. She 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 knew what the dealio was. Renee Young. Uh, so that was a that was actually a much better match. Again, Nikki knew that she was legal, and again at two counts they were going too sweet. That was pretty cool. So this was a much better match. This is a cheeseburger match. And wow, there's a lot of wrestling, because now we're at the main event, where we have AJ, the phenomenal one, 
AJ Styles takes on the one and only Ricochet. And this was just an amazing wrestling match. Um, eventually, the, um, the club members, again, a great technical match to begin with. Uh, the Bullet Club and, Al and Anderson and Gallows come down, and they're just like, no, you guys have your shit. Get out of here. I don't want you around here. I'll be him by myself. I'll show you what it's like to win. So again, for that, so for a couple minutes, it's like, oh, we're going to restart this match. And we're not re re restarting this match until you guys get out of here. So that was pretty good. And that was the last commercial break. So I like the fact that in the main event, there was actually a somewhat legitimate reason to have a little break. So that was good. So WWE, again, they put on a lot of wrestling for three hours. And you can just count out all the little food items that I gave these matches, and there's a lot of them. Granted, three of them, three or four of them were for the, were for the 24 7 champion. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. It is what it is, though. I'll tell you what, though, they're, they're teasing the Bullet Club. Again, because AJ Styles, he's not going to put up with this. Like, hey, I was the leader of Bullet Club, not YouTube. Not YouTube dingbats. They're in conga lines. I mean, this was good. I don't think, the, I don't think Ricochet, as King Ricochet, was there in New Japan after AJ Styles left. I don't think he ever faced him. But there was some great wrestling, though. I mean, very technical wrestling, very strike-related wrestling. Towards the end, it starts off in a very New Japan style. It starts off slow, but then as the match goes on, I mean, it builds and builds and builds, and it's really darn good. Very New Japanish, um, very technical. AJ Styles, he got busted open like across the bridge of his nose, and like he popped a pimple or something on, yeah, his forehead or something. Um, so there was a little blood, not not really. Juice, but just enough, it's like, yeah, maybe you got caught by something. Uh, Ricochet, I know, had a little bright red spot coming from his lip. So, hey, they're like, this is a good match. The other thing about this, you could tell they were telling each other spots through body language, but you did not hear spot talking. Lacey Evans. So again, it was really good, really crisp wrestling. Again, AJ Styles selling a little bit, bit of ring rust, and hey, that makes sense though. I mean, he was out for a while. Um, again, AJ Styles is just so good. Ricochet is so good. Uh, they can both do flippy, flippy stuff. Again, AJ, great, amazing counter wrestling. AJ Styles is so well versed. <laughs> he hit that scorpion death drop. It's like the whole crowd went, "Oh, man!" Um, again, there were AJ Styles ricochet dueling chance, which was awesome. AJ Styles tossed his shirt into the crowd. Again, awesome. Again, this was just so good. And then there was a show of respect. AJ Styles did win. And if there if it was so new Japanish, this is a surf and turf match. I think the only bad thing about this, this whole sh show overall, was the fact that there was no Firefly Funhouse. But we'll see what happens on SmackDown. Again, you can only do so much. Especially if Bray's going to be relegated to SmackDown. It makes more sense. And they got a lot of wrestling. Let's see here. Counting all the wrestling matches. Look here. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen wrestling matches over the course of three hours. So it for those people that have wanted wrestling on wrestling shows, they got it. It's hard to complain about that. I mean, again, Firefly Finals is fun. If you're going to have that much wrestling on a wrestling show, I can kind of live without Firefly Funhouse 
every so often. Maybe it's going to be that one little free to get. So again, that was Monday Night Raw, and I'll tell you what, it was, for the most part, a really fun Raw. Uh, it went pretty quickly. I have some news and notes. Um, tomorrow, so probably, well, tomorrow's, tomorrow's today. Tomorrow's right now, because it's 12 a.m. here. Oh, wow, I have to get to the gym. Um, tomorrow's today for me. Crackers all over. But... Tomorrow's going to be, so I'm going to get this video up as quickly as I can, because I do have to go to the gym still, because I forgot to do that today, because I needed a freaking nap. So tomorrow's going to be my Tuesday Smackdown. Friday's going to be, again, another live stream of Impact Wrestling. And then, well, Saturday night, Sunday, you can see this guy. Oh, Bo Tom. Here in Daytona Beach at the Ocean One Center. Here for Fighter Fest. Yes, Fighter Fest. So again, if you see me, you can say, hey, I've seen you. I've seen you online. You know what? I want my shout out. You say, cool. Here. So here, let me give you a little bit of a second for an intro. If I can do that for the show, they'll be all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And also give you a video shout out. I'll have to figure out again. It all depends on how many video people there are. And I only have so many video shoutouts. So again, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom. I'm going to get there freaking early Saturday. I know the show starts at 7.30. So I'm going to get there probably about 6. Because the doors will probably open 6.30. It's seating in around seven. So again, if you want your shout out and you want to take your picture and have it posted on YouTube by this guy, Hobo Tom, you can see me standing in line. I'll probably be there again, the six o'clock till about seven. Or if you see me, you'll see her. I will be in. Oh, where am I? Oh, I'm in section two hundred eight, row G, seat, seat numero uno. So again, if you want to stop on my say, hey, you're Hobo Tom. Yep, I'm here in the hobo section, which I think is like literally eight rows from the top of the building. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching and have a good night, folks. Bye.